How's it going and welcome back to the Pokemon Unite video here on YouTube. Today we're deviating from our normal gameplay focused video to review uh, what is quite possibly the largest balance patch Pokemon Unite has ever gotten to date. There's a ton of really awesome stuff in here that's probably going to fundamentally change the way Pokemon Unite, especially at the 5v5 competitive level, is going to change in a good way, I think. Let's take a look at what we have, huh? So we have patch notes here. We don't know the full detailed patch notes yet in terms of how the numbers are changing, but we have a number of small changes here. So first off, and, and big change as well, we added Zarina, who after we look at the patch notes, we're going to run through what her kit looks like and what her attacks look like, take a really interesting kit overall. So stay tuned through the patch notes to check out my thoughts on that. But before we get into the new stuff, there's a lot of good changes in here. So um, the Greninja here, is they are dialing back some of their buffs to Greninja, which I think is good. I think a lot of teams have settled on Greninja being better than Cinder Ace, and I really like that they're continuing to tweak and tune the numbers on these things to try and get the most number of these ranged attackers to be viable and equally balanced. So double team is going to deal a little bit less damage. Water Shuriken has its cooldown up from 5 to 6 seconds. Um, and this, you know, we'd seen some teams playing Surf, and I think this will probably lead to further increased move diversity among Greninja, which is a good thing. Uh, power up punch is uh, is really... Oh, we do have some of the details. Let's refresh this to make sure we might have some of these. Cool. Um, power up punch has its damage reduced specifically to opposing um, opposing Pokemon, I believe it was listed, not just... Uh, so you still are good at securing last hits, but you're less good at melting opposing Pokemon. It looks like our full charge went from 2,200 down to 18 and a half, and the extra hits after also also dropped down as well, and the no charge also also went down. Steadfast, stat decreases, so you're less fast to get less of a shield when this triggers. That's good. Uh, Greedent, super, not overtuned, but still obnoxious. Really glad to honestly see Covet get a cool, get a, get a, a little tune down here. Cooldown increased from, uh, nine seconds to 11 seconds. We'll hopefully make Greedent a little bit easier to catch on occasion, which is good. Zara got its damage reduced on its discharge. So it's going from, uh, 451 per hit to a total of 36 to a total of 3,000. It's a pretty big drop. What, almost 20, 20% or so is a big drop off. And then Plasma Gale damage decrease. That is, uh, it's Unite. So you'll be a little bit less get melted by zero your entire team at the, at the end of things here. So dropping this by 20% as well, which are probably good changes. I think this could be a real feel bads Pokemon, especially in solo queue. I'm interested to see if these changes make Zara still competitive in 5v5 comps though, because I think it already struggled to be a little bit competitive there. So these are probably good changes for solos, but they could push um, Zara off being a Pokemon that's common in five stacks. Um, Aerial Ace got its cooldown decreased. You know, I always took um, the Flame Dash over Aerial Ace, so maybe this will change my mind on that, getting to use a little bit more frequently. And Fly had the effects on the user weakened. So I believe I saw in another place that this uh, was reducing the movement speed increase that you get while flying. So I'll have to look and see exactly how much that is. Hopefully Talon Flame's still very playable, like likely is, I think. Um, and then here's where the changes get really big. So they basically power boosted every one of these Pokemon that gets its moves at a really late stage here. So Snorlax went from new moves at 6, 8 with a Unite at 9 to getting new moves at 5, 7 or with a Unite at 9 instead of 10, sorry. And the, the upgraded moves come at lower levels, 11 and 13, as opposed to as opposed to 12 and 14. This is a really big change. Gardevoir and Garchomp, similar changes, only they're getting their evolutions earlier. So Gardevoir and Garchomp are now evolving at five and nine, as opposed to six and 10. And this is actually a change I had talked about wanting verbatim previously, because this means that these Pokemon could potentially be reasonable jungle choices in certain compositions, because, you know, you come out of that first jungle rotation at five, so getting your first power spike at five means that you're much better for B. So, you know, if you put a Gardevoir in the jungle, you're going to come out of the jungle with Psy Shock or Future Sight at level five and be able to chunk through Bs and the opposing team and potentially get real ganks. You know, Garchomp's going to get its 
dash move at five as dig or dragon rush to provide a little bit of cc you know you come out of the jungle at five you help secure bees you can dragon rush push people back away that are trying to retreat these these are potentially very big changes that are going to have have impacts on uh on comp uh mammo swine also now evolving at five and nine as opposed to six and ten and honestly I think the most important thing about Mammo Swine's uh, changes here is that the high horsepower activation timing was adjusted. So both high horsepower and earthquake had a bit of a wind up before they happened. And now high horsepower, it just goes. So I had always taken crash and earthquake but with high horsepower just being an immediate push dash i think there's a good chance that that's going to be the ideal second move and at a minimum you know you're hitting all your power spikes sooner with mammo which is uh which is a very very power very like mammo swine has felt like a character and i'm biased because mammo swine is one of my favorite pokemon in this game but it's felt like a character that's just like just on the cusp of being really good and competitive with the other defenders in the game and both the high horsepower adjustment and your power spikes all coming sooner bodes potentially very well for it eldegoss fixed a bug for movement speed on the opposing pokemon so this is sounds like a nerf to eldegoss so it looks like it was impacting when it shouldn't have been uh very generic bug fixes for cramorant blastoise and sylveon and wiggly poof here and then here's here's where the changes kind of get big and have a big potential impact for comp play goal scoring hp reduced the devil's going to be in the details exactly how much this is reduced by but this more so than lucario actually being lucario is the reason why the 113 metagame exists the 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 health you gained from scoring was so high that even if you were two to one up top, if you only kept small amounts of Aos energy, you could live on your opponent's goal and not worry about it between stealing their berries and dunking to score health. And if two Pokemon up top are able to actually dominate appropriately a single person up there and punish them, it pushes the metagame away from the 113 because the idea of the 113 was Lucario was so oppressive with how now the scoring system worked with the heals that you could put Lucario two to one up top and be even or ahead against two Pokemon while your three people on the bottom got ahead against two. And if Lucario can't easily go even or be ahead against two people up top, there's a real trade off to putting three people on the bottom, which is good. You might have Aos energy dropped after Pokemon's knocked out of juice is good. It means if Lucario gets kills early, it's not going to have cheap energy to dunk. The berries in general disappear after five minutes. So your one of the bigger rewards for having your outside goal still be up actually drops off here. And it'll be more beneficial to have them go. And then these are good changes as well. So both your middle goal and your base goal get extra healing and a bigger shield effect on them, which means it's going to be much more difficult for the opposing team to snowball an early lead into completely running you over and locking you out of the game. And this is going to make a mistake that people already make quite frequently, even more punishing. Pushing your opponents on their second goal is going to be something you basically never want to do unless you have an incredibly good reason for it. It's something you already didn't really want to do, and now you, you definitely want to stay away from it. Uh, at any rate, really exciting patch not only with the new pokemon with Zarina coming but also just all these other changes we we toned down lucario in in a little bit of a way we powered up a ton of underplayed pokemon in a way that will hopefully be very very reasonable uh i'm excited to dive in but before we do that let's go ahead and jump on into taking a look at Zarina. speaking of our new pokemon because her kit's really cool i got a lot of interesting things going on all right, let's take a look at Zarina, the new expert difficulty melee all-rounder that was added to Unite today. Now, right off the bat, we've got a number of unique things about Zarina's kit, the first of which is the progression. So, Zarina is the first Pokemon in Unite to hit her final stage by level 6, hitting the middle stage at level 4. Pokemon that evolve early tend to be much better in lane, because remember, evolutions aren't just a visual change. They're also a power spike in terms of the stats that they get. So, Zarina is going to start hitting her max level of scaling nice and early now moves we got some pretty pictures in here razor leaf hits an area of effect and rapid spin has you dash this is another thing that indicates serena is likely going to be decent at laning having that mobility early on with a move like rapid spin means that you are able to 
um, get in and out and away from things inside of combat nicely. At level 5, we've got an area of effect in Stomp or Triple Axle, which is another dash. Um, at level 6, you not only evolve, and then you also choose between two different dash with a 10 second or 6.5 second cooldown. And then our Unite here looks like uh, looks like a big punch. Um, let's read the descriptions here of these, and then we'll jump on into some games with this. So, our boosted basic attacks, every third attack have us lunge at an opposing Pokemon, dealing damage and lowering their defense. This move's actually, this type of boost is actually very useful. This is similar to what Gengar has, and it lets your melee character get up to the opposing Pokemon really nicely. So, our boosted ability, our ability actually changes when we hit our final stage. So to start, when a hindrance is inflicted on this Pokemon, it decreases the duration slash effects of those. So CC is going to be less effective on this Pokemon. Same for the middle stage. And then when you hit Zarina, you still keep that anti-hindrance move. But then you also gain, after any combination of three boosted attacks or moves, your next boosted attack or move will apply the Queen Majesty's buff effect to this Pokemon, not including the Unite move. So, the Queen Majesty buff, looking through this, there are certain moves like Stomp that get an extra bonus effect when you have that happen. So, as a jump high and hit opposing Pokemon with defeat, when it hits, it damages opposing Pokemon, leaving it unable to act for a short time. So, a little bit of crowd control here. If you choose to use uh, Stomp, we're going to dive down into some practice games here and take a look at this. But if this is like a bit of a jump similar to Heavy Slam, that seems potentially very good. Uh, triple Axle has the user spin kick three times in designated direction as a dash, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. The damage dealt decreases each increases each time a kick hits, and basic attack speed gets increased for a short time after this move ends by a number of attacks landed. Razor Leaf just blasts forward in the uh, straightforward direction, and it has a higher crit hit rate. It's kind of interesting to note that uh, Zarina has an increased crit hit rate on exactly this move that gets upgraded, and then nothing else later. So not sure if a Scope Lens build is going to be ideal here, because usually you want that to scale into the late game, and only having it early seems like it doesn't have a lot of appeal. Rapid Spin. Um, notable, this will be different than Blastoise's Rapid Spin. I do really wish they'd stop reusing attack names. There's so many attack names they could pick from in the base Pokemon games. They keep reusing things like Rapid Spin and Surf and such between Mons, even though they behave entirely differently. So this is just a dash forward. And if you hit with it, it notably gives you more movement speed for a while. So if you're trying to get away from people, you dash through them and then you run. Seems very reasonable. And you upgrade into one of two different dashes. So longer cooldown dash here says, performs a flying high kick in the designated direction, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon hits and decreases their attack. So again, kind of a little bit more of a supporting role with move sets on here. So decreasing attack, a little bit of crowd control. Seems like Serena's build could potentially be flexible if all of these moves are, are playable. Opposing Pokemon that made contact with the Fly Kick receive damage and their movement speed decreased. Again, a little bit of CC, which is nice. A Grassy Glide slides in the designated direction, dealing damage and decreasing their movement speed. And this is followed by an attack in the opposing direction. It's kind of like bounce back and forth, which deals damage and shoves. Again, another repositioning. It'll be interesting to see how much actual movement we get out of this. Oh, this also has that Queen's Majesty bonus. Grant a shield to this move when it's used. So there's one attack on each of her her sides that get a bonus when you have that Queen's Majesty's buff from your passive. The Unite is just obviously Pokemon skill description 6622 underscore 001. Let's jump into a game and find out, find out what that looks like here real quick, huh? All right, let's see what we look like here. We're just a little blob to start. Razor Leaf has, a, has an okay. That does a decent amount of damage in terms of contesting last hits on things. I assume we can position this to hit both monkeys. We can, okay. So in terms of having a decent lane clear, that seems fine. What's rapid spin work? Okay, that is a good amount of mobility. That's a pretty decent double chunk on the monkey. Again, the things we're looking for are not only the mobility, and that did a decent amount of damage, but like that halved the crab essentially here. Our ability to contest last hit seems potentially very reasonable. So we level up. We do not hit a new move until five. Let's go ahead and hit that real quick here. 
Score time is a little bit low. Okay. Let's grab the stomp to start here, shall we? Okay, so stomp is... Stomp is not a, like, heavy slam. It's more similar to Garchomp's Bulldoze, where you just kind of hit everything around you. The CC on that is very minimal. The damage seems only okay. Let's see that again. Yeah, not a ton to a level 4B at level 5, which is pretty likely a level you're going to be at. How does it hit a crab? Only okay here. Let's grab our other attack and see how it goes. All right, let's start with Tropical Kick, huh? It's a pretty, pretty long dash. Oh, okay. So that there's that other bar above our head, which I assume is the Queen's Majesty buff. Oh yes, it, it must be, right? Oh, and the the icons. Look at look at the icons on my moves. You can see the icon changes on the stomp to represent that I'm going to get a Queen's Majesty buff here. But the stomp does heal me. When that, when that happens. Interesting to note. All right, let's give me a level here real quick and get to my Unite and see what that does. Unite just has a circle around me. Let's go. Let's go hit some bees with our Unite move and see how that goes. Survey says. Oh, it has to. Alright, so our Unite move is similar to some others where we have to hit a. I get that Starlax is tanky, but like that did not do a particularly impressive amount of damage there. And our next level up. All right, let's restart this and take a look at what our other two attacks do real quick, huh? All right, level us up in practice mode here. Triple Axel. Well, that's, what does this do? Oh. Okay, so this is... That's interesting. So, you can see on the thing, you kind of dash past people and then pull them back in towards you. That's kind of a, that's kind of a sweet bit of, of rundown. Like someone's trying to get away from you and you're like, all right, go past you. Now come back towards me and my friends. The triple, the range of hitting on the triple axle is also kind of impressive. And the, the area of effect on, on the kickback also seems rather impressive. Right, let's let that reset and uh, take a quick look. Let's toggle move cooldowns off. And uh, all right, let's kill you first.
All right, so that was five levels below us, obviously. Well, what's, how much damage does this do? Just 3,000. It takes someone out of the fight for a second, too. Flip that. Reset. The uh, triple axle there, when it cuts all the way through them, does a good, good chunk of damage. And that, again, like, just look at the the range on the the kickback on there the amount the amount it moves you back is not the same as what you hit because man that was definitely like outside of where our move back is and the kick effect is uh is really nice there all right sweet well i'm excited to play some with this I am going to be streaming this live on Twitch this morning for a couple hours before I play Magic. You could expect a highlight video here on the channel uh, tomorrow and the next day. And honestly, probably two or three days with this. We're going to need to try this Pokemon in lane. We're going to need to try it in the jungle with all the balance updates that came in this patch. We're going to need to try 113s. We're going to need to try 212s. There's a lot to explore. I'm excited. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll be back tomorrow with another Pokemon Unite highlight here on YouTube. It's the end of the video. Now you know it. Please smash like. Thanks for watching through all the way to the end. Remember, if you enjoy the content, in addition to smash and like, uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see here in the future. I post content seven days a week, so hopefully see you back again tomorrow. Peace, folks.